Hi everyone, hope you've been having a good week um, and I hope you had a great spring break. Um, this um, unit we're going to be talking about IEP meetings and um, so this lecture is going to be focused on that. I'm going to try to give you some tips and some things to think about as you go into your IEP meetings. Uh, so first off, before the meeting, um, do you have everything kind of drafted and organized? Um, and have you communicated with families in advance? We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but, um, you know, there's nothing worse than going into a meeting and having the whole thing drafted without really ever anybody talking to you about it ahead of time. So um, we talked about in the previous units that it's really important um, in order to create that partnership between all the IEP team members to um, have that communication and in regards to IEP meetings it's it's having those communications throughout the year not just at the meeting and is there anything you want to provide the parents so that they can be more involved so again it's you know not just inviting them to the meeting but making sure they're equal um, partners um, in the IEP process and do you feel prepared? Do you have everything organized, ready to go? Do you have the data that you need to show um, the rest of the team how the student's doing and the progress? And do you need anything else? Is there anything else that you haven't thought about? Um, has everyone been, been invited? Um, do you need to get any other information from any other team members, parents, things like that? And how do you want the room arranged? So that's really important. Um, a lot of times, you know, seat placement and where you sit in the meeting is really important because oftentimes, um, you know, if the family members are the last people to come in the meeting and you're all sitting at the other side, it can be overwhelming. So um, what do we know about parent experiences with the special education system? Some of this is going to be a review from previous units, um, but we know that IEP meetings are very stressful for parents. Um, you know, if you're, the meetings have to do with their child. Um, a lot of times those, those meetings, whether or not they're supposed to be or not, they're deficit based and um, they really should be focused on strengths, but that's not always the case. Um, also, you know, as we learned about earlier, um, there's other things that are going on with the families that we may or may not know about. Um, so it's stressful um, to go into those meetings for them. And that the special education system is very overwhelming and confusing. Um, you know, we focused on some of the law aspects um, earlier on in the course, and you know, there's just a lot of them. So for parents, it's it can be overwhelming. And there also can be a power imbalance if you don't have that equal partnership with families. Um, important elements of a successful IEP meeting. There's the shared responsibility, again, um, equal partners. Collaborative attitude, we talked about collaboration being very important to creating that partnership. Strategic planning, so thinking about the big picture on, you know, not just what you what do you want for that student this year, but also in the future. Um, facilitative behavior, so um, we'll talk about that in a minute, but, um, you know, facilitating the meaning, not just reading, you know, the paperwork. Um, you know, really being a good facilitator, looking around the room uh, at body language, making sure everyone's voice is heard, things like that. And making sure everybody that needs to be in the room is in the room. So who needs to be at the table and what's their role? So case manager, sometimes um, that case manager oftentimes is acting as a facilitator, but um, we'll talk about that in the um, the, uh, the next couple of units as well, but um, you know, I think, um, and many people think that a separate facilitator is also very helpful um, in these meetings because sometimes it's hard to play multiple roles at the same time, but um, that doesn't often happen. The general education teacher obviously is very important uh, because oftentimes if, they're, if the student is in the general education classroom, they're the ones who see um, what's going on in the classroom and can provide that feedback. Um, all service providers serving the student, an acting administrator, and so that's going to be somebody who's going to um, be able to answer questions regarding IDEA. And um, again, um, that self, self, separate facilitator and a someone who to write notes and record things that um, maybe the team members need to follow up on. 
So the general education teachers, what are they here for? They, um, they're they going to talk about how accommodations um, and any modifications, how those are going, any behavior issues, curriculum, is the student able to access um, all the curriculum in the classroom or um, and that's going to be helpful as we figure out whether or not um, are the accommodations and modifications do this need to get adjusted at all and uh, the teacher is going to help um, provide feedback on how to develop goals and what are appropriate goals for that student. Uh, facilitator um, like I mentioned, um, oftentimes the case manager is acting as a facilitator, but um, I do feel it's helpful to have a, a separate facilitator. And it varies by state, so sometimes certain states um, will provide facilitators, school districts sometimes will provide facilitators. It just depends, it's different um, at, at various locations. So that facilitator is going to start the IEP, um, make sure that we stay on the agenda, that the group stays focused. Summarize, you know, if, if the group, if a topic becomes really complex and, and goes on for a really long time, that facilitator is going to summarize what others have said. Suggest maybe different ways to look at things. So if things start to, if people start to not necessarily be on the same page, maybe suggest ways that we could look at something differently um, to help brainstorm solutions, um, to recognize when the time is to, to move on to kind of brainstorm solutions instead of identify problems. Um, and to create an environment that's safe. So um, it's going to, having a facilitator involved is going to help uh, make sure that um, the playing field is level. Uh, remind members of norms, of respect, things like that, and gain agreement through every step. And, you know, certain things, sometimes um, the topics get, um, something comes up that maybe is a little bit off of the original topic, facilitators often will have a parking lot that they'll put things in so that, um, you know, if we want to come back to it later. A recorder is going to um, record the information so that the other team members can really listen, so they're not going to have to take notes on what they need to do for follow-up. Um, I mean, that's really it. It's going to... Um, it's going to allow those, all those team members to really focus on really what's going on in that meeting. So what's recorded? It's information regarding the assessments, present levels, service options, agreements, um, all the ideas that are generated for IEP goal development. That way if we need to have a follow-up meeting or um, there, it will provide information for all those team members about how to um, carry out the IEP goals um, going forward. And anything that's um, that we put, like I mentioned, that parking lot, it's things that we need to follow up on. So starting at the IEP, so what's, what's important when you first get there? Um, first off, it's important to do welcome and introductions because sometimes um, uh, all the team members don't know each other um, because, you know, there might be somebody new, um, there might be an administrator that... Um, is coming to the meeting that nobody um, has met before. So go around the room and um, not just share what your role is and not who you are, but also like what is your role with that particular student, not just your title. Um, explain why we're here. Um, and I know a lot of families who bring a picture of, of their child to the meeting if they can't have their student at the meeting. Um, and that just helps the meeting stay student focused. Um, review and talk about the proposed agenda and make sure, you know, go around the room and make sure that um, do families or any other team members have any agenda items to add um, that we want to talk about. Um, we want to discuss meeting norms um, and listen to parent or family issues and how to involve the um, parents. So um, I just mentioned this, but introductions are going to be um, not just who you are and what your job title is, but how do you work with a student? Because sometimes families, um, so, particularly if a student has a, a really large um, IEP team working with them, sometimes students just have no idea who, um, who, what each person's role is. And so it's just really helpful. And then sometimes, like I said, it can be really overwhelming for parents and families. So um, you, know, you, you may think that they really know what your role is, but it's just really good to, to state that again. Um, sometimes um, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, but most of the time it is what you say. So, um, you know, just think about how it's coming across. Um, you know, we know that like emails, things come across the wrong way. It's the same thing in these meetings. Um, I know oftentimes I've been at meetings that just feel really rushed and it makes me feel like 
gosh, um, you know, I, am I really important? Is my student, is my child important to this IEP team? And so if you're feeling rushed, if you're staring down at your paper, um, if you're saying it sort of in a harsh, if something in a harsh way, um, if you're not really thinking about putting yourself in another person's shoes, um, you know, just think about how, how that, what that impact is going to be on the communication that you're having in the meeting. Um, so 10 steps to reach IEP success. We're going to go over these um, in a minute now, um, but just maybe take a look at those. Um, there's probably nothing surprising here. We talked about a few of them already. So pre-planning, um, really important, um, doing your homework ahead of time, contacting each other, um, including the parents and the families. So, um, you know, don't just come in and, um, you know, ask the, ask the students how the year's gone. Ask the families how this, uh, the year has gone. And, um, you know, if you have anything that you want to run by them ahead of time, um, that's a really good idea to do that. Uh, make sure that you have um, data to show the accurate present levels and baseline information because if you, like we talked about earlier on the course, if you don't have um, really good present levels and baseline information and data, you're not going to be able to figure out future goals. And um, kind of maybe come up with some, some goals that you can share with the team before you begin. Um, you don't want to come up with everything prior to the meeting because it really should be a discussion based on prior level um, present levels but you do want to be prepared with those ideas um, and create the focus for the meeting and send a draft IEP home prior to the meeting whenever whenever possible so again it's just the more information that you can provide to families ahead of time is just gonna be really helpful because you want them you want it to be a conversation at that meeting you don't want people just to be staring at a piece of paper or reading it during that time because you know um, this time is very important and it's a time that everybody is together to talk about the student and what the student needs uh, I, we already talked about this but following agenda really important and if you want you can allocate time specific time for each topic um, you know, it's really important. It helps people stay on track. Um, and, sh you know, asking, you know, if there's other agenda items, making sure that all concerns and issues are addressed. Um, meeting norms. Um, you know, the facilitator or the case manager can do this. Um, you know, just talking about respect. Um, asking people about what they think the meeting norm should be for that particular, um, Sometimes, you know, there's things that are important to families. I think just asking and posting those for all team members to view. So maybe posting them either on the whiteboard or um, something like that. Um, so strengths and challenges. So um, like I said earlier, it, a lot of times it's stressful for families to go into these meetings because it's deficit-based. And I know we're talking about the students' needs, so um, you know it's it's easy to have the meeting go deficit based. But um, you know we really should start with strengths and celebrate what's going well. What's what are what's something? What are things that the student? What are the strengths of that student? And then once you start doing that, then you can talk about needs, and those can align with the IEP goals. And then you want to talk about. Um, what the outcomes are. Um, so we talked about this in previous um, units. So, you know, what is the what is the plan for the future for that student? What are the what's what are the hopes and dreams both of the student and the family? What are they hoping to get to? So, I mean, even if a child is a student is nine, you can think about well, gosh, how does it? What is the end like? Are they do you does the family want them? You know, does the student want to go to college? Um, you know, what is the plan? And so making sure that all of those goals are going to align with those future outcomes. And those future outcomes can be, you know, annual outcomes or future, you know, even further out outcomes. And so it's just really important to keep those um, in mind when you are creating goals and talking about all these things. And, you know, having a supportive environment. So making sure, I mean, just really thinking about, we talked about this, but making sure how are you, um, how are you seated? What does the room look like? Making sure that you don't go into the, you know, uh, many times I'll get there and I'll see that um, there's a pre-meeting going on and I'm the last one to get there. Well, you know, just think about what that means to the family. Like, do you have people come out and get the family, make them feel welcome? Do you have 
Um, a lot of families will bring treats to the meeting to make it feel like a supportive environment, but are there things like that that other team members can do to make families feel welcome? Um, I really like it when um, other team members come sit on my side of the table because there shouldn't be a, oh, this is my side of the table and this is their side of the table. It shouldn't be like that. We're all equal members of that IEP team. And here's a picture of that. So sometimes this really happens and families have told me that, um, you know, this is a little bit overwhelming, particularly if they, um, you know, haven't been to a lot of IEP meetings. Um, we talked about this a little bit, but um, parking lot. So if things get off topic or there's things that we want to address later, um, just putting those aside so that we don't lose track of them. And we talked about this when we were talking about the seven principles of partnership and how important communication is. And so, um, you know, it's really important in IEP meetings too, just allowing equal time for everyone, making sure everyone's voice is heard, um, you know, making sure that you ask open-ended questions, thinking about how you're communicating, what's your tone of voice, um, you know, how are you saying things, um, not dominating the discussion, making everybody feel welcome to talk about how things, how, you know, what their view is on certain topics, and encouraging questions, and making and being a good listener too. So, um, you know, just making sure that people feel valued as they are talking. And here's another little cartoon about that. So, um, action plan. Um, in the last module, we talked about data collection and you know what to do after the meeting. And I know sometimes it's really frustrating um, to families because we'll have a really good meeting, but you know sometimes meetings last a really long time, and then we don't really talk about this action plan. Well, okay, we have these goals, but what now? What's gonna? How is that data gonna be collected? Who's gonna do it? What are those interventions and strategies? And what's that year gonna look like? And so. Um, you know, it's just really important to make sure that you don't end the meeting before you talk about these things. Um, because I know a lot of times families think, gosh, I had this great IEP meeting and then I leave and nothing happens. Or I'm having to really, really, I'm the one who's having to make sure that everybody's doing what they're going to be doing. And, um, you know, just making sure what, um, uh, that it's really clear what people's roles are when they leave and, um, how that information is going to be communicated back to families and the other team members so that you can because that communication should happen during the year, not just once a year at IEP meetings. So how do you close the meeting? Um, again, you know, sometimes those meetings can go really long and just make sure that you're not, um, you know, people don't feel like you're meeting the, the meeting ends abruptly. So a lot of times, you know, I know everybody is really, really busy and people are on a time crunch, but don't just, oh my gosh, I gotta go. And people just run out and it's like you're not even completed um, the conversation. If we need to set up another time for a follow-up meeting, then that's totally fine. We can do that, but but don't rush the meeting. End it on a positive note. You know, we started with strengths, but also end it with strengths. So the families walk out of that meeting feeling good about the progress and feeling good about the team that's supporting. You know, we're all there for this the same purpose. We're there to support that student. And I know uh, many times, you know, oftentimes. That whole team really cares and they're really trying their best and so end that meeting on a positive note is really going to make a big difference for those families and making sure that there's anything else was there anything else that we didn't cover in that meeting that we need to follow up on um so i wanted to talk about just some useful tools um i'm going to list them there um you know, just open-ended questions paraphrasing looking at people's body language so a lot of times you know, what families and others on the team are saying, you know, you might just look at their body language and go, gosh, they're not saying anything, so I think they're agreeing, but their body language is telling me something different. And then actively listening, we I mentioned that just a minute ago, so listening to what what families are saying and, you know, pausing, giving them the opportunity, um, you know, do, not dominating the conversation, making sure that you take a brief break and, and let that, let things sink in, because a lot of this is new information to families. Ask questions that actually work. Um, so identify, clarify, and address the underlying need instead of just responding to the request. So just really thinking about, okay, let me think about what the need is. Clarifying, making sure that you really understand what is the issue that we're, we're trying to address, and then you can talk about what the need is. And then you can figure out what services and things are gonna be appropriate for that. 
and thinking about how do you listen. So, or do you listen as an adversary? Um, you know, because option ten, there's different ways to listen. Um, so look, take a look there. Um, and that's very different than listening as an ally. So, you know, one is very supportive, and you know, you can tell, see how that fits into the um, seven principles of partnership that we're talking about in the communication and, and respect and things like that that we were trying to build when we were talking about the seven principles of partnership. That's those listening skills as an ally, not as an adversary. So here's a few um, verb phrases that keep things going neutral um, and help families and others um, feel like their voice is being heard. Um, you know, just restating and making and making families and everybody make sure that you know that you're listening to them. Here's some things that you don't want to say. Um, obviously, budget, money, I can't do that. Um, if you don't know if you can do something, just say, hmm, that's a, you know, let me think about that. I'm going to have to do some more research on that or something. But um, saying that you can't do something um, is just not something that you want to do in a meeting. Um, other words to, uh, um, some words to use, um, you want to focus on what's appropriate for the student, individualized needs, because we're talking about an individualized plan. Oh, yeah, that's something that we should consider, not can or can't. Um, yeah, I wonder if that's reasonable. Um, what progress should you want to you want to make sure that whatever services you're um, doing and goals are going to be related to making sure that that student's making progress. And we're talking about student needs, not wants, but needs. And so those are really important words to use. And like I mentioned a little bit earlier, seventy five percent of language is nonverbal. So. You know, you might be saying the right thing, but it's how you say it, and it's your body language, it's how you're, how you're, um, how the meeting's going, where you're sitting, how you're treating the families, and it's, it goes back to those seven principles of partnership, respect, trust, advocating, all of those things, and so all of those actions are really, really important. And there you go, body language, super important. So you want to prepare, plan, and propose, and that's priceless. So that's those are the three steps. It's really important. And if you do all of those things and really think about those seven principles of partnership when you're going into an IEP meeting, um, it's very likely that you're going to have a successful meeting and families will feel really valued. So what's your next IEP meeting going to look like? Picnic, People's Court, or SmackDown? Um, it's up to you. So. Um, you know, it's real simple. There's the seven principles. It's just making sure that every person's voice is heard, it, that we're equal partners. And um, and if you do all those things, families will feel like those meetings are less stressful. They'll feel more satisfied. They'll feel like their student is, um, the, the, the team is really supporting that, yeah, their child and uh, the meetings will go really well. And you'll walk out of those meetings feeling really good too because you'll feel like you're appreciated and it's gonna go both ways. So anyway, that's all I have for this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed this module. I really think it's a fun module. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to um, ask either one of us. Thanks so much and have a great week.